Hello everyone, I'm Georgia and welcome back to another episode of Tea with G. At high school there are three types of carnivals. The swimming carnival, athletics carnival and cross country carnival. But in Australia it's the swimming carnivals that are a pretty big deal because as we're a country surrounded by water, everyone learns how to swim at an early age. Ethical or not. Alright, I don't think we have it quite yet so we're going to go again. Okay, ready? Whee! Alright, so blow bubbles quick. Keep kicking. Blow bubbles. That's it Jemima. Doing well. Doing well, look up here. But what's a carnival without leaders, right? Well, this is where the school captains come into play. In America, they make posters and prepare speeches for these sorts of elections. But in Australia, it's honestly the most casual affair that takes about 15 minutes, usually negotiated over a 20 pack of crinkle cut chips and a talking stick. <laughs> well, at least that's how they elect our country's leaders, but the primary school sports captain elections weren't so different. Um, hi, I'm Jack. Um, I think I'd be a good sport captain because um, I've been on all the rides at Wet n Wild and Dream World and um, I do tennis on the weekends and um, I'm, a, you know, I'm pretty sick on a slip and slide. Right, okay. Any questions for Jack as to why he might be a good leader for us? Any questions? Oh, yes, Henry. Uh, just did, did you go on the Thunderwater Rapids ride? No, Henry. Okay, raise your hands if you vote for Jack. Hayley, Hayley, is that a hand up or down? Is that a vote? Yes? No? Okay. Alright, and hands up for Lucy. Who votes for Lucy? <sighs> Alright, you can turn around now guys. So, it was so close. But the house captain for 2021 for the red team is... Jack! Yes. It wasn't close. No one voted for Lucy. Uh, Charlie! What? No, that, no, that was not necessary. See, this is why we close our eyes when we vote. Everyone, can we see what we've just done? We've hurt Lucy's feelings. You know what? Your name's going on the board. Was the ride still the there when you went? Yep, yeah, Henry! Then it comes to the actual carnival. Now, usually these were held in a crappy public swimming pool that's about a 20 minute Sid Fogg's bus ride away from the school. The rusted, busted steel grandstands are a safety hazard within themselves. Barely standing up on their own anymore. And shaking like an earthquake every time someone steps foot in then it. Of course, these shitty ass grandstands are soon flooded with kids of four different colours. Green, yellow, red and blue. And the occasional kid that's colour blind. But when I say dressed in a colour, I don't just mean a coloured t-shirt. These swimming carnivals were a straight up contest where shittiest is wittiest. There was never any actual effort put into these outfits. Like the local $2 shop or hot bargain was buzzing this time of year. For starters, there's always that one kid in the yellow team that dressed as a banana and thought it was so fucking original. Just walking around all day, scoring high fives. Even if he was the most annoying kid in the year. Didn't matter. For those five hours, he was a f***ing banana. <laughs> How hilariously appropriate. <laughs> However, this is where I have a little bit of a problem with the carnival attire, okay? As it never seemed to change as we got older. Like, you know, when you were younger, it was cute to rock up to the carnival in a little outfit that your mum had put together out of old dress-up clothes and feather boas and shit that she found in the garage from her hen's night in 1992 that she'd rather not talk about. <laughs> like, that seems quite appropriate for an eight-year-old. <laughs> so tell me, how is it socially acceptable for a 17-year-old girl to wear pigtails and a bloody tutu to the swimming carnival? Huh? I'll give you a rundown. These girls, I was definitely one of them, would rock up to these swimming carnivals in pigtails with ribbons tied in each like a dog that's just had an expensive haircut, combined with a coordinated coloured tutu, an ethnically questionable flower necklace that's already started dethreading, some shitty fairy wings that someone has most definitely sat on and bent into the shape of a uterus, and last but not least, to finish off this slightly sexualised child's fucking uterus cosplay. What's that? Some striped knee-length socks that you found in the bottom of your sock drawer and honestly have no recollection of where they came from. Should do nicely. <laughs> and then of course you can't forget the kid who saw this as a cosplay opportunity and dressed as a bloody furry or a power ranger because just for today no one gets bullied. And if you're a guy at the swimming carnival you might want to go for let's just say the exact same approach. Fairy wings. But them. if you're a real jokester, okay, you might want to chuck on some colour coordinated suspenders and a tie over the top of a tutu for an utterly hilarious juxtaposition. <laughs> Equipped with those massive <laughs> off sunglasses that look like this to block out those haters. Now let's discuss the actual events within the carnival, where most of the races were dominated by the same three kids who did professional swimming outside of school, usually on the same team, of course. They were pushed to the absolute exhaustion that day and pretty much 
carried the whole team. Because let's be real, if you're not an athlete, the whole novelty of the carnival wears off over time. And as you get older, you're just sitting there thinking about how you could use all of this time to study. So of course, every girl in the stadium was coincidentally on their period that day. But what I think is hilarious is that it was always the captains in those teams where all the kids just swum like a that rock. That would take the relay race selections a bit too seriously. Mostly out of desperation. Kenzie, uh, Jess, team captain. Uh, we noticed you were quite a, a gun in the pool. Yeah, first in freestyle and breaststroke, was it? Yeah, very impressive, very impressive. Um, we just we just thought we'd consider you for the relay team, so um, here's my card. Have a think about it, let me know. Okay, cheers. What's that, Simon? I've got a girl with a broken arm. That's a head start, isn't it? Oh, oh yeah, I see her, I've got eyes on her. Oh, she saw me, she's starting to walk. I got her, Simon, I got her! This video was brought to you by my Spotify original podcast, G Thanks. Within this video, I discuss school carnivals. So stick around a little bit longer to hear a little snippet of an episode where Lily and I talked about school canteen. And a brand new episode is out right now where we discuss school carnivals even further. So go check it out, only on Spotify. The Petal Pops. Oh, the Petal Pops and they had like... Um, the banana ones were my favourite. Yeah, yeah, but do you remember the... Um, it was called Liquor Prize. Do you remember? Liquor Prize. <laughs> yes. Holy shit, everyone frothed the liquor prize. Because you could get a free one. Because everyone just wanted the free paddle pops. And I remember, like, when I would eat this paddle pop, I wouldn't eat it properly. I would, like, eat, like, like eat as fast as I could, like, <clears throat> like, right down to just the top of the stick. So the top of the stick was exposed so I could see if I won something. And I remember you could win, like, a Wii, a trip, a trip to Bali or something. Yeah. I want to know who won those. Like, who would go to Bali and you meet someone and be like, oh, how, like, why are you here? <laughs> I prize. won a liquor prize. <laughs>